All right, uh, King will be giving our uh, first uh, uh, lightning talk. I'll give you a five minute uh, timer with one minute countdown. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Um, that's what I call a tough ad to follow. <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much for letting me present here. Um, I'm a master's student over at Casper's School. Uh, this is my dissertation topic on uh, uh, in forecasting structural breaks. Um, first of all, who here owns any cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or so? Okay, a few hands up already. Pretty sure you have like, a heart attack every 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the idea of it. That's the interest lies. That um, w I want to know when did the price surge or when did the price drop like dramatically, most unexpected way. So the the methodology I use is a, is a type of uh, unsupervised learning, hit the Markov model. If anyone knows, uh, basically they use the Bow Welch algorithm. It's an expectation maximization algorithm to give the free mat uh, matrices. The, the point of interest is the transition matrix. Basically, it, uh, it contains the transition probabilities of the time series switching states. Um, there's no analytical solutions to the optimum states, so you need to test it out, uh, which is well, kind of a drawback for the hidden Markov model. So I theorized this as uh, a, a way to, to find the current state of the market. Um, you can see in this flow chart, we have the features of the market that could be like bid ask spread, that could be implied uh, cross rate arbitrage. Um, so we realized that the, feature, uh, the features have predictive market to the market, uh, to, uh, to the market, and the change in the transition matrix sort of gives us what we call a trading signals or alpha signals. Uh, you can see in the middle, that's basically the pipeline, the transition matrix is fed through, and then we back test this algorithm. Um, so we have a really simple trading strategies. If the transition probably goes up, then we long and short vice versa. So we, I started testing on the cryptocurrency markets. Um, this is the back testing uh, results for a month. We use five minutes data. Uh, as you can see that um, most of the portfolios on the below, they are having like an overfitting problem. And the, uh, the, in the table, you have the first uh, five, the five best performing portfolios. Uh, they all have uh, positive alpha, positive uh, sharp ratio, information ratio. These are uh, portfolio performance matrices, which which is good in instinct. But then we look at the 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 underlying classifier, or the underlying transition matrix. They are, um, if you look at the confusion matrix, look at the precision recalls. They, they don't really perform that well. Uh, when you compare to random guessing, except one, which is predicting there's no break at the, rec at the recall rate. So we, we're off not, uh, not a good start already. Then for any kind of backtesting, you need to do it for a different market. You can't just focus on the cryptocurrency, especially when you're only trading the Bitcoin dollars, uh, which is the best performing ones. The Ethereum, the Ripple didn't really hit the benchmark. When you turn to a, a more traditional market, the forex one, it's, the problem even is uh, it got even worse. <laughs> yeah, all the performance uh, portfolio performance metrics are all negative, uh, which is really not ideal. Basically, they didn't <laughs> beat the benchmark. Um, when you look at the confusion matrices or the precision recall, um, they all behave the, they behave the same way as the cryptocurrency one. So uh, scratching my head, what's, what went wrong, like any um, researcher, um, I saw sort of come up with like, uh, further improvements or mis uh, last, uh, mistakes or like, what I learned so far is that uh, the, first of all, the hyperparameter tunings, the, the hidden Markov model is essentially they are really susceptible to the, the, the fitting rin window. If you have an imbalanced sample, it means that you can't really determine the, ba uh, the baseline for the hidden Markov model. Then you also have the trading rules. Maybe it's too simple. Uh, we'll always trade on a fixed amount. Uh, maybe the underlying features, the, they are not behave NID. Uh, essentially, one of the biggest assumptions in the hidden Markov model. Uh, in terms of time series forecast, um, you need, probably need to do bootstrapping, stress period uh, to back text. And last but not least is that is it really comp compliance? 
So MIFID II is a, is a financial regulation. Um, they recently released that all algo trading or algorithm need to, to consider, first consider does it create a disorderly market, um, which is really lack of in here. So I already seen the sign, uh, uh, just the, my time here is up for five minutes. Um, thank you very much again. Uh, you can, uh, if you have any questions or if any things that you can discuss, I'm really open for it. Uh, it's my email, you can find me on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs>